A little boy complains of a toothache to his mother and she takes him to the dentist. But when she sees the doctor calling the FBI for her son, she is shocked and screams in terror and everyone is incredulous at what they discover. Dora was in her modest living room watching TV, waiting to pick up her son Lucas from school. The news echoed through the small room and a report about the increase in child abductions captured her attention. In the last week, three children have disappeared without a trace, announced the reporter. Her heart squeezed, imagining the pain of the parents of those missing children. My God, who could be cruel enough to take children away from their parents? She thought, her eyes fixed on the screen. The news brought out the protective instinct inherent in all mothers, and a genuine worry began to agonize Dora. It was a strange sensation that ran through her body. That's why she decided to go to school early to pick up her son. Her motherly intuition spoke loudly in her chest, and she didn't hesitate to act. When she arrived at the school, the woman saw several little children undergoing dental care, a temporary campaign promoted by the public school. The atmosphere was full of excitement, with children running around, curious about the procedure. It was an effort to promote oral health among the little children. That mother was a little relieved to see her son taking part in the activity with other classmates. There you go. Your teeth are all clean now, buddy, said the doctor. Ah. And don't forget your new toothbrush. Here, take it, said the dentist, handing the little boy a simple toothbrush, which made him very happy. Lucas got down from the chair with a beaming smile and left the room. And when he saw his mother outside to pick him up early, he ran to her full of joy. Hey, Mom, look at my teeth. They're all white. The woman laughed and hugged her son. Oh, my love, they look so beautiful. Super white. The little boy also proudly told his mother that he didn't cry during the appointment. I went to the dentist, mom, and I didn't even cry. And he gave me a brand new toothbrush. Lucas exclaimed overjoyed. The doctor also said that I don't have any cavities. Dora, thrilled with her little one's happiness, smiled and hugged him once again, ready to give him a happy afternoon. Well then, I think we can celebrate in a very special place. What do you think? The mother suggested. The two decided to celebrate Lucas's good behavior with a trip to the candy store. The boy, without cavities, was free to choose his favorite sweets, with moderation, of course. The afternoon was filled with laughter, treats, and a special connection between mother and son. Well, let's go home now. It's getting late, and Mom has to make dinner. When they got home, the little boy asked to play in the yard while she prepared dinner. Dora agreed and got busy in the kitchen preparing everything. The enthusiastic boy then ran around the yard playing, their house was very humble with a low fence. They lived in a poor neighborhood and everyone could see the simplicity of that family's life. However, the tranquility of his football game was interrupted when the ball escaped into the street. Oh no! The little boy huffed, knowing that his mother wouldn't let him go far when she wasn't looking. How am I going to get my ball now? It was at this opportune moment that a man appeared. He was a stranger who seemed to have appeared out of nowhere from behind the trees in the street. He picked up the ball and called out to Lucas. Hey, little boy, come here, come here. Look, I've got your ball. Come here and I can give it to you. But the boy, a little distrustful, said like any child. My mother said I can't go out or talk to strangers. Then I can become your friend. Then I won't be a stranger anymore, right? Come here. Let's play ball together. What do you say? The man suggested with a sinister look on his face. The little boy pondered, although he knew he couldn't, but he wanted his ball back and, afraid that the adult would take his toy away, Lucas was about to open the fence when his mother instinctively came out of the house and shouted, Lucas! Get back here now! This triggered an unexpected turn of events, as the stranger quickly took a few steps back and threw the ball into the yard again. Then he ran, got into his car, and drove off, leaving Dora with an unnerving feeling. Uncertainty hung in the air, and she felt as if she hadn't arrived in time. Something terrible might have happened. The woman hurried to the side of the road, trying to see who was talking to her son, but only watched as the vehicle drove away, without being able to clearly distinguish the individual or the larger details of the car. Come on, son! Get inside! Quickly! Back at home, the mother scolded the boy not to talk to strangers again, and then they had dinner. Everything seemed to go smoothly. However, as evening approached, Lucas began to complain of a persistent toothache, expressing his discomfort all the time. Mom, it hurts. It hurts a lot. The little one's distress was remarkable, and Dora, anguished at seeing her son suffer, promised to resolve the situation. Tomorrow, I'll take you to the school dentist, okay? 
He'll know what to do, she said, trying to calm the little boy down while stroking his hair. But it was a long night, with the little one always complaining about the pain that was attacking him. The next day, the woman prepared everything to take the little boy to school, but with one change. Instead of following the usual routine of putting Lucas on the school bus, Dora's motherly intuition led her to drive him there herself. She had a simple car, reserved for emergencies and trips to the market, since her finances were limited for gasoline. However, on the way, the woman noticed a car stopped near her house, which made her uncomfortable. She even thought it was the same vehicle that had driven away quickly the day before. But then, she thought it was just a coincidence. The mother was in a hurry to get to school, after all. Her boy had a growing toothache that needed to be resolved. As soon as they arrived, Dora reported Lucas's situation to the principal and requested an appointment with the school dentist. However, she was surprised to hear that the dentist was no longer there. The previous visit was part of a temporary campaign, dear. We don't offer this service here. The mother's concern grew as she realized that there were no options to relieve her son's pain. As they were discussing her son's situation, they were interrupted by the sudden entrance of another agonized mother, Carol, who was crying her heart out. My daughter, my little girl was kidnapped last night. Carol screamed and fell to her knees. She shared the terrible news that her daughter, Amanda, had been kidnapped. Dora's eyes widened and her heart sank when she realized that it was Lucas's little friend. Oh my God, little Amanda, what if they tried to take Lucas too? Thought Dora, her face reflecting terror and worry as she finally began to connect the dots. But before we continue with the story, we wanna know, if you were in this mother's shoes, what would you do? Let us know in the comments. Now back to the story. With the news of the little girl's disappearance, classes were suspended that day at the school, plunging the atmosphere into tension and apprehension. Dora returned home with her son, who was visibly saddened by his little friend's absence. His mother talked to him, trying to ease the pain they both shared and maybe provide some comfort to her son. We'll find Amanda, my love. The police are doing their best to bring her back, Dora said, her eyes revealing her determination to protect her son. However, her concern intensified when she noticed a car following them at that moment, a constant shadow that suggested imminent danger. A suspicion formed in her mind. What could it be? The idea that that car could be related to the previous events was drumming in her mind, although she couldn't prove anything, as it could just be a random car going to the same place as her. They lost the car when they turned a corner and managed to get home without any problems. Lucas, on the other hand, continued to complain about the acute toothache, and his distress was adding to Dora's concerns. Mom, it hurts so much. I can't stand it any longer. It really hurts. Tears ran down his little face. So that desperate mother decided to use her last savings to take him to a private dentist, and so they went to the dentist the next day. In the waiting room of the clinic, the mother was writhing with anxiety. I wonder what's going on in there, she asked herself. Lucas was already being attended to. So, to distract herself, the woman got up and went to the huge window to look out at the beautiful view that contrasted with her simple daily life. The trees moved with the wind and the cherry blossoms fell, leaving a pink carpet on the street that enchanted her eyes. However, something in the middle of that splendid landscape terrified her. The car, that same car she always saw following her that had been parked near her house. The car she thought was just a coincidence, was parked outside suspiciously, and now she was sure there was something very wrong. A dark feeling began to form inside her, a growing fear that something terrible was about to happen. They want to take my son away. Desperate, Dora simply walked into the dentist's office, determined to run home with him, but what she saw when she opened the door left her even more perplexed. The dentist holding the boy with one hand in the chair and shouting into the phone, Please bring the FBI for this boy now. Panic seized the mother as she tried to approach Lucas, but the man, concerned for her safety, stopped her, asking for the guards to restrain her. Security! Hold her! Don't let her take the boy! Let go of my son! I want to take her away! What are you doing? What the hell is going on? Dora screamed and saw her little boy standing there all scared with his eyes wide open. But what happened? 
We have to go back to the day before to explain it better, when Dora was watching the report on missing children. While she was occupied with her daily worries, her son was taking part in that supposed dental campaign at school. In the morning out of the blue, a van with people dressed in white, apparently volunteers, arrived at the school, offering their services to examine the children. The teachers and staff at the school were delighted with the initiative, believing that they were simply volunteers doing some good. However, was this campaign just a benevolent act, or was there something more sinister behind this good deed? In that instant when the dark feeling enveloped Dora, she could never have imagined that her maternal concern was about to save her son from an even more sinister fate. Guided by her inexplicable intuition, by deciding to pick Lucas up from school early, she prevented the boy from being kidnapped. But how? We will tell you now. What this woman also didn't know was that her trip to the candy store and the fact that her son bit into a lollipop would become an unexpected turn of events triggered by the mysterious volunteers. The mother and son never imagined that a simple sweet would be the key to uncovering something much darker behind the dentist's unexpected visit. With the persistent pain in Lucas's tooth, she decided to take him to a private clinic that didn't know about the campaign at the school. When the boy entered the examination room, he told the doctor all about his appointment with the school dentist, about not crying when he touched his teeth, and even about going to the candy store as a treat from his mother. The doctor even provided some temporary relief by making some lighthearted jokus. You just couldn't stand the temptation and went for the sweets, right? Joked the dentist, establishing a light atmosphere before examining the patient. However, that pleasant moment gave way to a gripping suspense when the man, after an initial analysis, found himself paralyzed in the face of a shocking discovery. That, that can't be, he muttered, his eyes reflecting disbelief at what he was witnessing. The doctor, unable to contain his surprise, quickly took out his cell phone, telling the boy not to get up, and started an urgent call to the police. The tone of the conversation and the expression on his face indicated that something far beyond a simple toothache had been revealed casting a veil of mystery over what awaited Dora and her little boy. But what exactly did the dentist discover, and how was it connected to the previous events? Just as the mother burst into the room and was confronted with the chaotic scene of the dentist desperately calling the FBI for help, the woman went into shock. Confusion reigned in that dental clinic as she screamed for an explanation, and the security guards prevented her from getting close to her son. Let me go. I want my son, let me go. But within minutes, even though the atmosphere was tense, the police arrived quickly and efficiently with sirens echoing and lights flashing, creating a frenetic atmosphere. Can someone please explain what the heck is going on here? Dora asked as FBI agents took control of the situation, picking up the boy and carrying him out of the dentist's office and into a black car outside. No, my son. That poor mother was in terror, thinking they were taking her little boy away. But then an agent approached her, and that's when the shocking truth was revealed. Mrs. Dora, I'm sorry to inform you, but your son, Lucas, well, he had a microchip implanted in one of his teeth. He's unwittingly turned into a tracker. What? But how? The woman was stunned. Then they explained to her that someone in that volunteer campaign at the school had put the chip in the boy with the intention of kidnapping him later. Dora absorbed the magnitude of the danger and shouted, running to the window. There was a car outside. It must be them. They're following us everywhere. Her trembling voice reflected her dread at the thought of losing her little one. The FBI quickly set up intensive coverage of the area, but the bandits had already fled as soon as they saw all the police cars arriving. The investigation continued for a few more minutes as they took out Lucas's tooth chip and finally managed to reveal that it was a kidnapping scam, a terrible trafficking of children. The microchip was used as a tracker, allowing criminals to identify children at vulnerable moments to carry out their nefarious plans. Dora was stunned, with a heaviness in her chest, at the thought that her son could have been taken away from her. My God, my son, he was almost taken from me, echoed the woman's anguished thoughts. The magnitude of the danger hanging over her son was now clear, and the tears of relief were mixed with the terror of a reality that, by a thread, had not become irreversible. But that was far from over. Dora, driven by maternal instinct, 
and the memory of Amanda's mother's suffering, decided to take bold action to capture the criminals. She shared everything about the suspicious car and the tragic story of little Amanda. Filled with unshakable courage, she also offered herself as bait to lure the kidnappers, a daring plan that could lead to the capture of those responsible. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna help catch them before more children suffer. Lucas's mother declared with determination. The plan was drawn up in detail, and the woman agreed to put the tracker that was in her son's tooth in the car seat. Lucas stayed at home, protected by police officers, while his mother risked her life to save others. So he headed for a deserted spot near a forest, where hardly anyone passed by, following the agent's instructions. It wasn't long before she saw a very suspicious car following her. It wasn't the same car as usual, as the criminals would be very dumb to stay with the same car, but it was definitely them. That's it, you bastards. Come after me. She whispered, with fury growing inside her. And when she finally reached a hidden cabin in the middle of the forest, lit only by the weak moonlight, she got out of the car and said loud and clear, pretending that Lucas was inside. Wait here, Lucas. Mom will be right back. I'm just going in to turn on the lights so we can spend the night here, okay? She went into the cabin and stayed there for a while. That was enough for the kidnappers. Believing they had a vulnerable prey alone in the car to rush to get him. However, fate had a twist in store. The police and FBI agents, skillful and attentive, emerged from the shadows and from inside the cabin, surprising the criminals before they could complete their nefarious plan. The scene was chaotic and intense, with screams, sirens, and flashing lights. The criminals trying to escape, gunshots, everything you could think of. But they were finally detained. So the truth about their evil plan was discovered. They were going to kidnap the children and, when they had a good number of them, put them in a container and sell them to a rich man in another country. The authorities, armed with the information obtained from the capture of the criminals, managed to locate and free all the other child victims of trafficking, including Amanda, the little boy's friend. Dora and the dentist, recognized as heroes, were presented with an award for the courageous act that prevented a greater tragedy. For the woman, life took a new turn. Her courage and resilience turn her into a symbol of hope. She became a public figure with her inspiring story opening doors and a better job materialized, giving her and Lucas a chance to build a new life, free from the dark specter that had almost enveloped them forever. And she never forgot that the maternal instinct is never wrong, that she must always listen to her heart and have faith in the forces that fight against the evil of this world. And if you liked this story, I'm sure the next video that pops up on your screen will move you too. Don't forget to subscribe, give us a thumbs up, and activate the notification bell so you don't miss any of our upcoming videos. See you in the next heartwarming story.